Bobby Driscoll was a child actor who was born in Cedar Rapids, Iowa in 1937. By 1943, Bobby and his family had made the decision to move to Los Angeles after Bobby's father was told he could no longer work in the insulation business as asbestos was beginning to negatively affect his health. After moving to LA, Bobby's parents were encouraged to begin auditioning Bobby for film and TV. The son of their local barber actually managed to land Bobby a major audition for MGM. The boy would soon star in his first drama, known as Lost Angel. From here, Bobby began to regularly land acting roles all throughout his childhood, starring in many major motion pictures from the time, such as Song of the South, The Fighting Sullivans, The Big Bonanza, and Identity Unknown. He soon began to work very closely with Disney and was eventually contracted by them to be an exclusive star in Disney films. He eventually went on to perform in Peter Pan, voicing the main character in the classic film, which was recorded between 1949 and 1951. This was Bobby's last major film role of his career, even though he would live on for nearly 20 years. From here, Bobby's career began to decline sharply. He starred in several minor television series, none of which were very memorable. Bobby's contract with Disney was ultimately terminated because he had uncontrollable acne during his teen years. After this termination, his parents withdrew him from special schooling and he was transferred to a university high school. He was bullied heavily in school and eventually returned to drugs because of this. He finally graduated in 1955 but was soon arrested in 1956 for drug possession, though the charges were ultimately dropped. From here, Bobby continued to star in somewhat random roles throughout his adulthood though none of these roles came with large paychecks or any sort of major recognition. By 1961, he was forcibly taken and imprisoned in a rehab facility in Chino, California. He remained here for nearly a year before being dismissed, at which time his acting career continued to taper off. He eventually had enough of the Los Angeles film scene and decided to move to New York to audition for several Broadway productions. He continued to work on Broadway until late 1967 or early 1968. The details are a bit scarce. Bobby left his New York life after he was essentially broken financially. His Broadway career was not panning out the way he had hoped, and there are rumors that he had begun taking drugs again. The combination of the two likely led to a fateful day on March 30th, 1968, when Bobby's body was found in an abandoned building by two young boys. Surrounding his body were two empty beer bottles and several religious documents that had been scattered around. An autopsy showed that he had passed away from hardening of the arteries due to his drug abuse. After his death, no one in the nearby area even recognized Bobby enough to positively identify his body. Because of this, he was eventually buried in an unmarked grave in New York. It wasn't until over a year later that Bobby's mother called into Disney Studios in hopes of finding out where Bobby was living, even though he had exited his contract with them so many years ago. She was attempting to make contact with him anticipating his return to California, as his father was passing away. NYPD were ultimately given records of Bobby's fingerprints, which allowed them to properly identify his body. He still remains buried in New York to this day, though he's now been given a proper tombstone next to his father in California. His death was never reported to the public until 1972, when Disney re-released the film Song of the South, which Bobby had previously starred in. Bobby's death has raised concerns for several reasons, as many began to believe that he'd likely been killed and dumped in the aforementioned abandoned building. However, depictions of the crime scene seem to allude to a different story. When Bobby was found, he was lying on top of a cot. Due to a lack of tenants in the building and the fact that it was abandoned by its owner, it stands to reason that Bobby may have been homeless and living in this building. This has never been officially reported, but the details certainly seem to add up to it. It was also never mentioned just how long Bobby had been in this building since he initially passed away. His last role in Broadway was allegedly in late 1967, but his body wasn't found until March 30th of 1968. Details from the time period are lacking to say the least, but it seems possible that Bobby's body could have been lying in this building for nearly six months before he was discovered, which would also explain why no one could recognize him. If you guys happen to have any links to additional resources on this case, please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure we'd all have a bit more information regarding Bobby's final days, but for now, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click that like button. If you loved it, maybe consider sharing, subscribing, or even supporting me on Patreon. But I've been Ty Knots, you guys have been lovely, and I'll see you in the next video.